All right, so here we go, here we go guys. It's a 2018 Monaco Yacht Show. It's officially underway. So I thought I'd start with this very unusual colored uh, yacht behind me, Motor Yacht Go. It's a 77 meter from a company called Apley Turquoise Yachts. So uh, anyway, let's go and uh, start looking around and uh, see what we can find. <laughs> So this is a motor yacht power play and this is basically this is a support vessel uh, for the uh, discerning yacht owner who needs more space for his toys so uh, basically most yachts will carry everything on board one yacht but if you uh, if you just don't have the space and you have the money which they all do so you know uh, why not have a second yacht to follow you around a shadow boat um, and this is what that's what this is. So it takes a helicopter, can take boats, got a big open deck. And even still, even so, as a crew of ten, but even so, it still has room for six guests. So if, um, if you have an overflow, you have a party, and you and you and you don't have the space on board your main yacht, then you've got uh, three cabins here for six guests. You know uh, why why have one yacht when you can have two at twice the price? That's what I say. Oh, by the way, the helicopter. Looks like an Augusta Westland 109, I believe. Now this yacht here, this is a, this is Muthi Yacht Latona. This has got a very nice uh, beach club down there. So you can imagine sitting out there, relaxing. It's a 50 meter yacht. It's built by CR, CRN. And uh, this is, I think this is here, I don't think this one is for sale. I think this is an example of what they can build because they've, they've, uh, they've kind of hidden the name of the boat and they've just put up their own literature. So the company that's, uh, that built it are using it as, a, as a, an advertisement of what they can do. So with a bit of luck, I'm going to get to go on this boat here. Um, Motor Yacht Flying Dagger. It's a 41 meter fast boat. It's got a maximum speed of 34 knots. So uh, yeah, it should be interesting. So I'm just trying to get on board right now. So we'll see what happens. Okay, here we go. Okay, so this is Ocean Dream Maker 3. Those three squiggly lines at the end there, that's actually a three with a nice little Robinson helicopter on the back. I think it's an R44. Don't quote me on that. This is built, this is brand new. 2018, that's why I haven't heard of it. It's, a whole, it's got five cabins for 10 guests. Has eight crew. Has two MTU uh, engines. It's got 1,360 horsepower. So that other boat that was just on Flying Dagger, that had uh, three engines, three MTU engines. So this has got two, uh, obviously has space for a helicopter as well, which for a boat of this size, takes up a lot of space. Always makes me laugh when uh, people bring a boat to a boat show and then tell people no filming. I just got told that I wasn't allowed to film this boat by a girl that looked about 15 years old. But point being is, if you're bringing it to a boat show, uh, it's going to get filmed. All right, so uh, we're uh, looking at some of the slightly larger yachts of the of the show now. This is uh, Larissa, in my Larissa, so, and then we get next to it is uh, these is a, this is like a 57 meter boat, 
Uh, this boat here is St. David's, like 67 meters, I think. And then next to that, we've got Motio Anna, complete with helicopter, Eurocopter 135. Uh, I think that, that's a 68 meter boat. Uh, it's actually called Anna One now. Uh, I suspect that's because the owner wants to name the new boat with the same name and he wants to register it in the same place. Like I mentioned before, you can't register the same name boat in the same place. So anyway, that's the biggest boat on this side of the on this side of the uh, marina. I'm going to head over to the other side. Look at the look at the really the biggest boats that come in, which dock at the cruise ship terminal. They're just literally not big enough to get in here. All right. So this this yacht here, Aquarius. I don't know whether you can see the name there. Anyway. The, uh, the name of the boat is Aquarius, and the reason why it's registered in a place called Bloody Bay, which does not sound very nice, but the reason why this is, is uh, this is the Cayman Islands, right? So in the Cayman Islands, um, they're only allowed to register one boat with that name. So the chances are, the boat was, uh, when they went to register this boat, it was already taken that name. So the Cayman Islands has, has more than one island, and the other island is called Bloody Bay. So they actually have to register it with that, have, have to have Bloody Bay written on the back of their boat, which I'm sure they were, owner was very happy about. But anyway, that's just a little bit of trivia there. All right, so this is uh, Via Taurus. It's a 40 meter boat, it made, built by uh, Raymond Langton. Langton has uh, powered by two uh, Cat 500 kilowatt engines. Very nice, I like the color. This boat is called, nobody can see that. Happy Tea, it's called. <laughs> so as you can see, um, during the yacht show, they put up these pontoons. So you can actually walk around pretty much the entire marina. And for the bits that you can't walk, they actually have little uh, tenders to take you from point A to point B. Okay, this is, uh, this is in my apogee. I think she's uh, 70 meters. I saw this one not that long ago in Capri, actually. And next to it is uh, Volpini 2, which is a 58 meter. Apogee's quite old uh, for a super yacht, built in 2003. Volpini is brand new. Volpini 2. Built in 2018, 57.7 meters or 58 meter. All right, so this is a sailing yacht, Sibaros, 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 Sibaros. Um, it's a 70 meter sailing yacht, built in 2016. Uh, they always look small when you see them at sea because they're so low, but as you can see, it's pretty big. Look at the people on board, it gives you an idea of the scale. It's a 887 gross tonnage. Beautiful looking things. Next to it. Is about whose name I cannot pronounce. <laughs> Pursuers, sailing yacht Pursuers. I think it is Pursuers. I don't know how you pronounce that one, but uh, looks very similar actually. Look at this thing. This is a sailing yacht Mikhail S. Voron Voronsov. That is quite the name. That's something you'd expect to see in uh, a mutiny on the bounty or something. Great looking thing. Don't know an awful lot about sailing yachts, I'm afraid. There's a lot of wood on that though. Look at all that wood. All the deckhands are skilled, uh, skilled at staining and varnishing. This is a uh, Sakara V. Sakara 5 from Sakara V? I'm not sure. 
spelt with a V. I suspect it's Roman numerals. This is 68 meters, built in 2010. Looks like it's for sale. I'm not sure of the price though. Gross tonnage is 1,500 tons. As you can see, more pontoons. So this pontoon connects here from here, where I've just been walking, and it takes us right over to the other side there, which is a permanent pontoon. And I can walk straight up, stars and bars over there, up to the marina where the big boats are, which is where I'm heading to, as you can see in the background there. I love this. It's not just a tribute. It's actually the name of the vessel. <laughs> Someone's a big Beatles fan, it would seem. So this boat was built in 2007. Let it be. Maximum speed, 17 knots. Uh, it's actually uh, built in Holland by Hessen, I don't even pronounce that right. Hessen, I think it might be. Uh, it was refitted in 2017. 47 meter boat. And uh, sleeps six guests. One owner plus five guests. Five crew. And the asking price is 18 million euros. Okay, this is uh, Motia Octo, as you can see. As a, as a woman was just saying, OK2, okay <laughs> but it is, it is pronounced Octo. Uh, it's a 66 meter boat. Uh, it is for sale if you're in the market. Uh, the price, the asking price is for 42 million euros. Uh, you can charter it if you don't want to buy it, if you don't want to, or maybe you want to try it out first, uh, 400,000 euros a month. Well, that's, uh, oh, silly me, 400,000 euros a week will uh, secure it for a charter. All right, so uh, looking at this, this is uh, this is Moti Yacht Go, funny name for a boat. It is the flagship of uh, Turquoise Yachts, uh, and it's just been delivered. It's, uh, it was delivered in March of this year, and it just completed sea trials, and then, uh, it came straight here and is now in uh, Monaco Yacho. So this is brand spanking new. It looks it too. All right, this is the 88 meter super yacht, Illusion Plus, built by Pride Mega Yachts. Holds uh, 12 guests, 25 crew, seems a lot. Steel hull, it's a big boat though, it's a gross tonnage of 3,600 uh, tons. It's a pretty decent gross tonnage for about that size. 145 million US dollars. So it has a dedicated spa, uh, a beauty salon, a gymnasium, two jacuzzi pools, and a touch and go helipad. Uh, designed to enhance onboard experiences, Illusion Plus displays innovative yacht and uh, design and yacht construction expertise. Okay, that's what the brochure says. Touch and go helicopter pad means that it can't actually sail with the helicopter on the deck. So it's, for a big yacht like this, it's 
you'd expect it to be able to take a helicopter, but yeah, it's, it's obviously not a priority for whoever, whoever spec'd it. And this is one of the biggest yachts here today. Uh, Motor Yacht Aquarius, 92 meters. It's a fed ship. Uh, it was built in 2016, so it's quite new. Uh, top speed of 17 knots. Cruising range of uh, five and a half thousand nautical miles at 12 knots. Uh, you can accommodate 14 guests and a crew of 31. This is a bike, obviously designed by Fedship. Electric bike, no doubt. <laughs> it's quite cool. Get one with every 100 million euros you spend in the shipyard. That was a joke, I made that up. I don't know whether you can see inside there, but there's a gym. Shell door opens out, gym inside. Not that you'd want to really do that, because then it's going to be hot as balls. Now this is Moti Air. A-I-R. Look at that, look at that seat. That is a, for a serious fisherman. I've never seen a CPR with one of those before. How many rods do you need, by the way? How many rods can you control at one time? <laughs> I don't know anything about fishing, so maybe it's possible, but that's a serious chair. I don't believe this boat is for sale. Um, it's for charter though. It's 81 meters. It's one of the biggest boats here. This is, this is where all the big boats uh, are docked. There's a crew of 21. Uh, can sleep guests, uh, 12, 12 guests. It's got seven cabins, but it says 12 guests. So I assume that means owner plus 12 guests. I don't know. Uh, I can't. F I don't have a price though uh, for chartering it. So. The name of this boat is unusual, and it's, uh, the owner is uh, Augusto Perfetti, and he owns the Air Chewing Gum brand in Italy. So if you know if you know of this brand, well, anyway, this is what chewing gum buys you apparently. So has a helicopter up on the top deck there. I think it's a Eurocopter, but I can't see enough of it to be sure. Chewing gum, eh? Has a matte black hull as well, which is weird. You don't see that very often. Cost 120 million. US dollars to build. All right, so this is uh, Hilandes, which I showed briefly in my video last night. Um, it looks like a, I thought it was a Benetti, but it's not. Uh, it's actually built by uh, Aberking and Ra Rasmussen. I can never pronounce that. Uh, they built also the new Aviva, the 100 meter Aviva yacht recently. So, yeah, it looks a bit like a Bonetti bow. It's a 74 and a half meter super yacht. This is, uh, this is uh, brand new also, I think. Um, it's 2,000 tons. Styled by Harrison Eidgard, London-based studio. Okay, so one of the things that this boat has that you don't see on many civilian yachts is the white ensign. This is a, a tradition that goes back hundreds of years. This is traditionally only worn by Royal Navy ships. However, the king at the time decided to give permission to the Royal Yacht Squadron, which is, which is as you see, it's registered there, RYS. It gave them permission to fly the White Ensign, and that tradition has stayed to this day. The, so the Prince Regent at the time, in 1817, became a member of the club. Uh, in 1820, when he became King, Ge uh, King George IV, it, the club was, re was renamed the Royal Yacht Club. Yacht members are given a suffix of RYS, so they can put that after their names, and they're permitted to fly the White Ensign, as I said, of the Royal Navy rather than the merchant Red Ensign, flown by the majority of other UK-registered vessels. The club's patron, patron is Queen Elizabeth II, 
and the club's admiral is Prince, Prince Philip, who is also a former club commodore. You can see here the police are uh, the police have closed off. The, basically, the whole marina is closed off to uh, no regular traffic, and only people who have got the proper passes can get in. The police are controlling the, the access there. So there is like a five and a half thousand euro price to get in and out of the marina during the yacht show for any tender, any boat. So uh, yeah, it looks quite choppy outside as well. There's a strict speed limit until they get outside of the walls as well. Hence them bobbing around there. All right, this is a Riva, a Riva 110 Dolce Vita, sweet life, that means in Italian. So 110, I assume means 110 feet, even though the Italians use the metric system, which is a bit odd. Anyway, this is the biggest yacht that I'm aware that Riva actually built. Okay, so uh, this, this uh, Dolce Vita is capable of 26 knots, it's 34 meters long. Uh, and it has a cruising speed of 23 knots, which is fast. And it has uh, zero speed stabilizers, which is great, which means that the stabilizers will run like as it is now. The state you could turn the stabilizers on if you wanted to, uh, or you know, if you're at anchor, etc. It's a uh, beautiful yacht. All right, so this is Moti Yacht Celestial Hope. Uh, this is quite an old boat for you super yachts then. This is built in 2008. That's ancient in, in, in this game. Uh, interestingly, uh, it says on, the, on this, their information that it's had a 10-year special survey recently completed, but it doesn't say anything about a refit. Uh, so that's, that's, a sneaky, that's a sneak peek into the possibility that it hasn't had a refit since it's since 2008, which makes it, you know, all the technology will be quite old if it hasn't been replaced. Um, so that's something for a potential owner to to want to want to take a notice of. Uh, usually they'll say, you know, if they've had a refit, then they'll say major refit completed at this date. I can't see anything on their information about that refit, so that's not about I'd be buying if I was in the market. But uh, that's not to say it's not a beautiful yacht. I'm sure it is, but it's just all the technology and all of the mechanicals and the electrics and all that stuff will all probably be dated. Um, yeah. So, uh, interestingly, prices, uh, the asking, asking uh, price is 17.5 million euros. One thing about all these yachts, you'll see these names, Edmiston, and over here we got Wyco and uh, Ocean Independence and all that. These are, these are not the companies that made it, these are the companies that manage the yachts. So uh, they'll manage the crew, they manage the, a lot of the yachts' finances and stuff like that. So that's what these management companies do. Uh, and um, generally are a major ball ache for all the crew. Because they've got their own way of doing things. But anyway, this is, this is big business. And this is what a lot of the companies that are here at this yacht show are, are uh, advertising their management, uh, their management companies. This boat has its own bar. So, you need to go to the pub? No, just go to your own bar. <laughs> so you look at this yacht here and you think, oh yeah, that's a, that's a pretty big yacht. And then you pan over here and then boom. Okay, that's a big yacht. This is Moti at Barbara. So another, another thing about the agents, these management companies is they also manage sales. So a lot of the time, the, the boat might not even be managed by this company, but then when it comes to selling it, then they bring in these these companies to actually uh, sell the boat. So this is one of the largest yachts at the show, 88 and a half meters. Um, it has a crew of 32, approximately, and uh, has uh, six cabins for 12 guests. This Galileo G with the biggest antenna dome in the world. <laughs> it's huge. I think it's a 3.4 meter. It just looks massive because it's on a relatively small yacht. Interestingly, this boat's registered in London. So this guy's not afraid of paying his taxes. OK, 
Okay, guys. So the show is winding down for today. Um, so we will we'll come back tomorrow. The sun has set over the mountain. That for me tells me it's time to get back to the apartment and start editing. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, come back tomorrow and we'll start all over again. All right, bye.